Hi, I'd like to demonstrate some software that I've been working on uh, that hopefully will address some of the needs that uh, a number of people on the Blip uh, Photo Friends group of, on Facebook have expressed. And that is the need to be able to download their blips um, and also um, how they make um, blip books. So I've written this uh, piece of software. Uh, it will run on Windows, Mac, Linux, but not tablets or um, iPhones or Androids. Anyway, with that, um, it is hopefully going to be made freely available to Blip users. Uh, it is free software um, and it's in its first version at the moment, so there are some terms and conditions. You'll use it at your own peril if you choose to use it. Anyway, so this is um, the Blip browser software that I've written and uh, I'll show you how you use it. So the first thing to um, talk about is how you log in. Now, uh, as you'll see at the top, um, you've got um, the email address and password. These are the uh, credentials you've used to log into the Blip Photo website. Um, these are optional. Uh, if you don't provide them, you will not be able to download the original resolution images that you've uploaded to Blip. Um, so it's up to you if you want the, the full res um, images then you'll need to provide those. This is a temporary workaround. Um, the more info button will provide more details about this. Um, what you actually need to provide as a minimum is the access token and if you go to the API um, uh, notice at the bottom of the Blip Photo web page you'll be able to find out more about um, the API and authentication tokens. Anyway so I'm going to um, provide the authentication token for my wife uh, which I've got off that website and I'm going to authenticate myself. And as it says, uh, I've not provided an email and password, so um, you'll only be able to download the standard resolution images. Once you've logged in, you're presented with um, your uh, latest entry for your journal. Uh, so this is the Journal for Photomaticus Hazel H. Uh, you can get a biography for that person. Um, you can go obviously to previous entries, uh, next entries, you can show comments. Uh, you can, if you've got an extra, click on the extra to get a bigger picture of it. Pick the picture as well, get a bigger version of that. Um, you can also browse the user's entries. Um, so this is a this is for May. Let's go back one month to um, April. Um, so there's April's um, entries. Uh, and you can also obviously pick off these. Um, so let's go back to April. I can pick um, that entry, uh, display it. You can click on these um, uh, tags down here to search for other people with those um, values. And again, you can click on those uh, entries to pull up that user. Again, it'll change the journal uh, and again, pick up that information. Let's go back to Hazel H, uh, select Blipper. Um, anyway, so that is all well and good and probably nothing special. As I say, um, you can do all that with the website. So the most interest interesting stuff is obviously the download. One of the main reasons for doing this is to address the need of the Blip community to download their um, images or Blip entries and also potentially to generate um, Blip books. Uh, so let's look at uh, what you can do with this. Um, it is a bit of a busy screen, um, but it does give you lots of flexibility. Uh, the main thing is you know, what you want to download. So uh, you may just want to do the images. That's those. You can choose those buttons. Um, you can do just pure pieces of text. So you know, if you wanted to assemble something yourself using text components, uh, then you can select one or more of these. But probably the most interesting bit is the HTML, as that allows, through the use of um, LibreOffice, the conversion to any of these document formats listed down here, so PDF, uh, LibreOffice, Word, etc. Um, and you can choose to have any of these pieces um, downloaded either individually or combined on a daily basis or even on a multi-day basis into a uh, document or multiple documents. 
Um, probably the most useful is going to be to you know, effectively do something like a um, you know, sort of blip book sort of thing. Um, so I'm going to choose uh, to download these. I'm going to break out the images into a separate directory from the text because if you're downloading a lot of stuff, uh, then you'd have a lot of files in the same um, directory. You can prefix the uh, things they download by uh, one of these options. I just generally stick to date, uh, makes sorting very easy. And I am going to choose to um, generate both uh, LibreOffice and PDF versions uh, for the output. Okay, so how do I choose what I want to um, download? Well, I'm going to start by picking uh, an entry from, say, last month, um, let's say even March, because uh, I know there's some extras in there. Let's just take the last 11 days of March. So there's the first item I'm going to pick, the 21st. So I point to that. So that's the one I've chosen. And I'll choose that, so 21st. And I'm going to go as far as the 31st. So there's the 31st entry. Select that. And now this download button becomes active. Uh, so let's get rid of that. And so let's uh, um, move that over there. And what I want to bring up is um, the uh, download image area. Uh, and we'll see some of these uh, files uh, roll in as um, they're generated. So uh, let's just move that across a bit to be able to see it. So I'm going to start the download. And you'll see the status here. You can see these bringing in the images. There's the extra coming in. Uh, these are the HTML files. Um, and that's the download complete. And that says, do I want to do the file conversion? So this now takes um, LibreOffice uh, on the command line and runs a conversion uh, set of arguments to turn uh, these files down here into PDFs or um, OpenOffice uh, documents. Now, you must not have um, as the information says here, um, LibreOffice running. It does suddenly um, fail to work if it is running in advance, so uh, I've stopped it from running. Uh, so let, let's do this generation. And what it will do is in the, um, in the text area, it will create some new directories and put the PDFs and the uh, LibreOffice uh, files into those directories. So again, let's uh, kick that off. You get the output up here. Uh, that was the file conversion for the open office format. There's the PDF stuff being generated. And again, that's been done. So let's see what it generated. Um, ah, and one thing I realized I didn't tick was to um, convert these into single um, entries. So I'm going to say redo this and we'll rerun this. So we may get a lot of do I want to overwrite stuff? Hey ho, that's the way it goes. Um, yes, we're going to rewrite these. A uh, bit of a pain, but hey ho, shows you that uh, it doesn't overwrite things without uh, asking you. And we'll try this again conversion. So it's going to write these files and say the interesting bit will be. Um, the daily basis versions. So uh, let's take a look at this one. So here is uh, the first day um, with the text. Um, let's take the 20, I think the 22nd had um, an extra. There's the extra. And um, at the end, we've got the combined entries version. So let's look at that. And um, here's the combined version. And you've got a pretty good start on what you might consider a printable blip book. And um, as I say, you can go and edit um, these documents. So these are simply editable um, files. So if I take the 22nd, I can open up LibreOffice. It opens up as a web document. If I correct it to view normal, I get um, this. And because it's a proper document, you can change the styles, the fonts, etc., etc., um, and correct any you know, oddities in the um, in the document.
So I hope that is of interest to people. And with that, I will leave it there.